Good morning, young scholars. I'm Albert Einstein, and today we're going to embark on a journey through the universe as we explore my most famous work, the theory of relativity. You see, the theory of relativity is all about how we perceive space and time. Let's start with a simple thought experiment. Imagine you're on a train, looking out the window at a tree as you pass by. To you, it seems like the tree is moving backward while you're stationary. But to someone standing by the tracks, you're the one moving, while the tree is stationary. This is the essence of relativity, the idea that motion can only be measured relative to something else. Now, you might be thinking, that's all well and good, Albert, but what does this have to do with space and time? Well, here's where things get interesting. In our everyday lives, we think of space and time as separate things. We move through space and time ticks away independently. But according to the theory of relativity, space and time are intertwined into a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. Think of space-time like a trampoline. If you place a bowling ball in the middle, it will cause the trampoline to sag. Now, if you roll a marble across the trampoline, it won't go in a straight line. Instead, it will curve around the bowling ball. This is similar to how space-time works. Massive objects like the sun cause space-time to curve, and this curvature affects how other objects move. This is the basis of gravity in the theory of relativity. So, in essence, the theory of relativity is a way of understanding how the universe works, from the motion of planets to the behavior of light. It's a bit like a map guiding us through the cosmos. And just like any journey, the first step is to understand the map. So, let's dive in and explore this fascinating theory together. And remember, as we delve into these complex ideas, don't let them weigh you down. After all, gravity is not responsible for people falling in love. Now that we've dipped our toes into the universe of relativity, let's dive deeper into the two pillars that hold this theory up, special relativity and general relativity. Let's start with special relativity. Back in 1905, I was working in a patent office in Bern, and I found myself wondering what would happen if I could ride alongside a beam of light. This thought experiment led me to two important postulates. First, the laws of physics are the same for all observers no matter how fast they're moving, as long as they're moving at a constant speed in a straight line. Second, the speed of light is the same for all observers, no matter how fast they're moving. These ideas may sound simple, but they have profound implications. For instance, they imply that time can slow down and objects can get shorter as they approach the speed of light. Now, let's move on to general relativity. After publishing the special theory, I realized that it didn't account for gravity. So I spent the next decade trying to incorporate gravity into the theory. The result was the general theory of relativity, which I published in 1915. Here's a simple way to understand it. Imagine you're in an elevator in space where there's no gravity. Suddenly, the elevator starts accelerating upwards. You would feel a force pushing you down, just like gravity does on Earth. This led me to the equivalence principle, the idea that being in a gravitational field is equivalent to being in an accelerating frame of reference. In other words, gravity isn't a force pulling objects down. Instead, it's the curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy. Just like our trampoline example, massive objects like the Earth curve space-time around them, and this curvature tells other objects how to move. So, special relativity is about the speed of light and the relativity of observers while general relativity is about gravity and the curvature of space-time. Together they form the theory of relativity, a new map of the universe that has transformed our understanding of space, time, and gravity. And remember, even though these concepts might seem heavy, don't let gravity get you down. After all, it's not the apple falling that amazes me, but the moon not falling. Now that we've explored the fundamentals of the theory of relativity, let's take a look at its impact and applications. The theory of relativity isn't just a fascinating intellectual exercise. It has real, tangible effects on our world and our understanding of the universe. Firstly, the theory of relativity has had a profound impact on modern physics and cosmology. It has led to predictions and discoveries that have reshaped our understanding of the universe. For instance, the theory predicts the existence of black holes, regions of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. It also predicts the expansion of the universe, a phenomenon that was later observed by Edwin Hubble. 
Moreover, the theory of relativity has practical applications in our everyday lives. Take GPS technology, for example. The satellites that enable GPS are moving fast and are far from the Earth, which means that the effects of both special and general relativity come into play. Without taking into account these effects, the GPS coordinates would be off by several kilometers. But perhaps the most profound impact of the theory of relativity is how it has changed our perspective on the universe. It has taught us that the universe is a dynamic, interconnected web of space-time, where mass and energy can warp the fabric of reality itself. It has shown us that the universe is stranger and more wonderful than we ever could have imagined. As we wrap up this lecture, I want to leave you with a thought. The theory of relativity, like all of science, is a testament to the power of human curiosity and imagination. It's a reminder that by asking questions and seeking answers, we can uncover the mysteries of the universe. And remember, even though we're dealing with heavy concepts like space-time and gravity, don't let them weigh you down. After all, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving.